Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, we're gonna go over some ratios today, look at some ratios. Uh, this is what tells us relative value. Uh, this is where the, this is how we make money. This is our valuation metric. Uh, our valuation metric tells us when something's cheap in relationship to other assets. That's how you make money, period, the end. I don't know of any other way of making money. You have to have your asset appreciate faster than other assets to increase your purchasing power of those other assets. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to look for assets that are down in relationship to other assets, buy those assets, have them appreciate over time against everything else, and you can buy more of everything else. Uh, so really, you're just exploiting the difference in the ratios or exploiting the differences in valuations. The ratios tell you what is undervalued and what's overvalued in comparison to history. And that's how you make money. You always go after the cheaper undervalued ratios. And that'll give you purchasing power gains, not just money, purchasing power gains, inflation adjusted. Uh, if you go in an asset and let's say platinum outperforms gold, but you purchase gold, gold still went up in price, but platinum outperformed it. You can buy less ounces of platinum buying gold uh, in that scenario. So your purchasing power went down measured in platinum. But if platinum went up against gold, you could have purchased platinum and bought more ounces of gold. That's what we want to do. We want to buy more of what other asset. Uh, so we'll go over this. We'll, we'll jump this. I'll give you my financial opinion here. Uh, this is a downtrend line, simple downtrend line. We've broken it uh, to the upside for the CRB index in relationship to the S&P 500. Uh, I am suspecting that this is bottoming and it's about to turn on up. We always usually see a big break and then you see a return move. Uh, if we were to zoom in on this, you've got the big break and then we're gonna see a return move and this return move could come all the way back down even to here. It may not, it may find some support where it's at because uh, we've got a lot of buying and selling and support through this area where it's at right now. So I think that the commodities right here, right now is a good spot to be looking and, and cost averaging into. And, and I know people, they, they wanna, they want me to tell you kind of what is a good investment. Oil, platinum, silver, um, copper, nickel, they're all good. And, and we'll get into some of them at the end of this clip and I'll show you what their patterns look like. Uh, here's platinum, uh, platinum to gold ratio. We're gonna zoom on out. Uh, it's a descending wedge pattern. It's right at its spot right here, which means that We've got a return move. It's doing a full retest. We're right there bouncing off of the support. I'm buying platinum right now. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a buyer. Uh, I'm, I'm in there buying it up uh, on this return move. I bought a bunch down here as well. I swapped my gold for platinum at this ratio on this coming up in March. Uh, I also bought a whole bunch through here. I swapped my palladium for platinum. In this same time frame i thought this was a capitulation blow off bottom and that's i'm still holding my view on that so here's the platinum to palladium ratio uh, i swapped in this region in here in march uh, for very good i was getting almost three times uh, three platinum ounces to one ounce of palladium it's coming on up it's compressing some i already uh almost doubled my ounces uh in this just a little this little move down here uh, if we were to look out, if, it, if we were to get back to a 5.5 ratio, a 5.5, I bought it, I swapped my metals at 0.33, I think. So if it goes to 5.5 divided by 0.33, I get, <laughs> I can get 16.6 times my metal if this ratio were to go back to a five or five and a half. Uh, which it, it could take some time to do that. And even if you were to go to like a five, a five divided by 0.33 is a 15 times my, um, 15 times my metal. So I swapped my, uh, palladium at the bottom here, uh, right at 0.33, I think is where I did it. I, and I got platinum. And if this were to reverse back, I get 15 times my platinum. Tell me a trade that can do that, where you get 15 times your purchasing power of another product. And, I, and if this thing can break to the upside here, and I don't know if it will, we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I'm going to be laughing, guys. I'm going to be laughing. 
absolutely laughing. So I'm buying platinum. Yes, I'm loading up on platinum with these ratios where they're at. Here's platinum to silver ratio. We're at 1 to 42. Historically, the low has been somewhere in the 30s. This is about as low as you're going to get. Uh, that's what that's what about what it was in 1980, uh, the silver to platinum ratio. <clears throat> and with the early 2000s, platinum usually takes off kind of early, and we got all the way to a ratio of 147. If you had swapped at 34, 35, let's do 35 and let's use a ratio of, of 145. So 145 and 35. Uh, so if you had swapped and you, you, you had bought uh, silver up here and compressed it down to 35, so 145 divided by 35, you got four times your metal, four times your metal. And if it were to go back, you multiply it by another 4.14, you have 17 times your metal from this down and up absolutely ridiculous returns that's not dollar de denominated dollar denominated is going to be some ridiculous number gold to silver ratio gold is outperforming silver silver is getting cheap again and if platinum's cheap to silver just imagine how cheap platinum is platinum's dirt cheap guys it's dirt 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 cheap i still can't believe it's that cheap i, I it blows my mind how cheap platinum is uh because i remember back uh, so I remember back in the year 2008, platinum was over $2,000 an ounce and I was buying some of these metals. I wasn't buying platinum at the time. Uh, I was buying palladium. Um, and I was looking at it going, man, I, I wish I could buy platinum. It'd be awesome to own some platinum, but it's just too expensive. And I was looking at the ratios and, and I didn't, I, I, I'll be honest. I didn't really understand investing nearly as well as I do today. Um, I kind of knew they existed, the ratios. I kind of used them a little bit, but. I, I I didn't piece it all together as, as well as I had today. Uh, by lucky happenstance, I did buy palladium, and I just held on to it. I didn't really change it, and, and I was buying silver at that time as well. Um, it was cheap, so I, I kind of I just got lucky. I got lucky, guys. I I admit it. I got lucky, and I, I didn't know what I was doing. Now, fully know what I'm doing. It's like good luck. I'm I'm deadly now with these ratios, and we've got the ratio coming back up. There's probably fear in the market. Something's going on. Uh, but I'm still, I'm not very fearful. It doesn't matter to me. I can hold these things for a pretty long time and let the ratios blow out to the downside eventually. Um, what's probably happening here is you're probably getting a return move. Um, let me let me zoom out first. So we've got this kind of like hit here, hit here, hit here. We've got all these hits. I can even go back to here because we hit there as well. Um, maybe what happens is we get our first kind of blowout from this um uptrend line let me let me zoom in here so here's your uptrend line the first thing we do is we blow out below it and then we do a return move we'll probably do a return move up to like 83 up here and then we'll we'll start our descent um lower which means silver will outperform gold that's my guess uh it is possible that it could even go all the way back to 95 96 maybe but it wouldn't discourage me of owning silver i would just pile into it even more uh, here's palladium to silver ratio. This thing's ridiculous. Uh, this is my swapping example, turning $200.98 into $54,740, a return of 273 times your money and a and an annual return of 27.5% per annum. And this was just using silver and palladium, wasn't even using uh, rhodium or any of these other ones. Could you get this return? Probably not. You probably wouldn't choose the tops of the tops and the bottoms of the bottoms. Uh, but I do think you could get pretty close uh, to this return, beating the S&P 500, uh, using less risk, having less risk, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, here's the Dow Jones to, to gold ratio. Uh, we're going to zoom out here. We've got this massive type of, type of pattern. Uh, I think we're going to eventually head lower and compress this under the market conditions that I see coming. The market conditions are an expansionary phase of real estate, inflation, and higher interest rates. Here's the gold uh, to oil ratio. We've been in this upward channel. We're still in the upward channel uh, with the conditions that are coming in an expansionary phase, inflation, all that stuff. I think we're going to break to the downside of this ratio and break below uh, this 1920 mark and then eventually compress down to probably a ratio that was close to six, six or eight. So that's somewhere in this range in here, uh, just like we did in 2008, just like we did in 0506. 
Uh, and these conditions back here was an expansionary phase until it blew out. Uh, so this is the, that inflation keeps the ratio low. So we got to ride it. We got to ride this thing all the way um, downward. And I think we're going to see a big compression in the ratio next year is my guess with the supply demand uh, imbalances. And here's the copper to gold ratio. Copper uh, is just hanging out here. We're right below its its resistance line. Uh, zooming out, there's your, your hits, a whole bunch of hits on this line. And then I think we're going to break to the upside at some point. I can't tell you the exact timing. It's just like this point here. I think we're we're, we're hitting here. We're, we're coiling up and we're going to see a big break to the upside at some point. Copper is going to go into a big bull market for a very long time because of the shortages in copper. Uh, we do not have the projects lined up in copper. It's probably going to compress quite a bit against gold. Uh, and the prices are going to go far higher than where they are today. It's, it, it's a mega trend, a super cycle in copper, so to speak. Uh, if we try to do this renewable world, if we go to electric vehicles, uh, it, it, it's just ridiculous how much copper is going to be used and how we have no projects for the next seven to 10 years um, to really fill the gap between, I'd say, a year or two from now till seven to 10 years. Um, we're kind of doing okay at the moment, but I think this is just going to continue to walk higher, especially the price of copper. Uh, this is lumber, not a ratio, just lumber itself. It is rocketing higher. Um, it's coming right back. This thing is smoking higher. And of course, they don't want to look at lumber. We broke out of this big pattern here uh, to the upside, and it's been rocketing higher. So lumber's been doing great. We are in, in my opinion, we are in, and the lumber to gold ratio, lumber's outperforming gold, is signaling another big move to the upside. That's what this is signaling. And what that signals is that the expansionary phase of real estate increases lumber prices because the demand for it goes up. And we're coming into an expansionary phase of real estate. So lumber prices are probably going to remain very elevated. And yes, they're going to be volatile. Yes, they're going to bounce around. Just watch that real estate market. Nickel. Nickel's getting forced up into this wedge. Well, is it going to break down or break up? And if it breaks down, we may have a cooling off period uh, before we see another big move higher. Or maybe this breaks to the upside and we start rolling like no other. But this thing's at a critical spot, I would say, uh, for nickel. Palladium. I'm not going to say much about plating. We'll go to copper. Copper, we're doing our uh, our huge break here. Uh, so we had a, a break here, big old move higher, a one, two, three correction. We're going in a break here. We broke to the upside, and we're just consolidating at the moment. Uh, this consolidation, we're moving back and forth, uh, moving sideways. Eventually, this will break to the upside at some point. But it could even come lower um, and, and do a retest. It could still. And we'll be okay. Uh, some of the home builder stocks, I'm going to throw them in just because I don't go over them that often. Uh, Hovenin broke out of its downward trend line. We, I was talking about it in here, saying, "Hey, look, look at Hovenin. Uh, this thing's a, you know, a super buy right here." And here we are, rocketing higher. Boom! Good thing we own it. Uh, MDC rocketing higher. Rocketing higher. Ah, we don't need that one there. Rocketing on up. LGIH, it's probably going higher. There's our trend line. It's breaking and it's moving on up. And then we got KB Homes. KB Homes has got kind of a trend coming through here. I'll draw it in real quick. Uh, it's something like this. We're, we're going to be breaking to the upside. If the other ones are going to the upside, this will probably break to the upside as well. We've got massive patterns here. Um, this, I mean, it's coiling up into a corner potentially. Maybe it breaks to the downside. But we'll watch. We'll watch it. Um, the other ones do not possess that that type of trait. They possess they possess declining, uh, descending wedge patterns. And this thing, <laughs> this thing could go so much higher. It went all the way down to six dollars. This thing here is, Hovenin could be one of the best investments um, from the bottom here. Of, of it was like six bucks at the bottom, came coming on up, and this thing could reach. I mean, it could go all the way up, uh, in, into anywhere in this range in here. Insane price performance uh, for Hovenin being one of the best. I'm going to go on up here and go over a couple more um, things here in this clip. Uh, I've got the XAU to goal ratio I want to cover. That's right here. Uh, this is the XAU to goal ratio uh, coming down. 
broke to the upside. We are still moving sideways with this ratio. When this thing breaks to the upside, guys, when it breaks this line, I think we're going to see a big old move higher. Be patient. Uh, the valuations of the gold and silver index in relationship to gold are very cheap. It's probably one of the cheapest things that, that, that we know of. Just have a little allocation to it, hold on to it, and just ride it higher. Um, this is telling you that this is a, at a, a, an extreme low for the ratio. And gold and silver miners are incredibly cheap to gold, and gold's incredibly cheap to all these other assets. So gold and silver mining companies, I think they're going to do well. Uh, I like the royalty companies a little bit better because it insulates the uh, the input price. But I do think mining companies will have its day in the sun for a period of time. Uh, and this looks fantastic. It's a fantastic looking setup. You just got to be patient. Gold, just to, just to jump into gold real quick, uh, we're kind of just moving sideways at the moment uh, on the short, short term. But we break this pattern here uh, that's, that's developed. It, it's going to run. It's going to run, just going to take some time. Same with silver. We're kind of at this support line right here. Hopefully we can find support and move on up. And then platinum also. Uh, platinum, I'm zooming way in on it. Descending wedge, broke out. We're just moving sideways here. I'm a buyer in this area here. I doubt we're going to break down to the downside. I mean, we could, but I, I just, I think for me, I'm buying it. I'm getting my shares that, or getting my platinum, physical platinum. It's cheap. We had a little buying pressure down here as well. Um, I'm, I'm going to ride it higher. Even if it goes down lower, I'm going to continue to cost average in. Uh, platinum Platinum's my my ticket uh, for a much higher price. And it's not just a price. The ratio is what I'm really looking at. So uh, that's what I've got for today. Just wanted to go over all that uh, and the ratios. Uh, I, I think we're still at cheap ratios for everything. Price, tar you know, price um, pricing these things in terms of dollar prices. It's going higher, man. Just give it time. Be patient. If you guys like this analysis, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.